subscribe to our channel click on bell icon you never miss any update hi i am kiran from kiran testing academy so today we are going to talk about manual testing yes that too in a 60 minutes okay before starting up with the video few things uh, to be noted it's a fast track manual testing video we'll be trying to cover this whole manual testing in 60 minutes actually if you want to take a course obviously it takes 8 to 10 hours so we are trying to cover that in a 60 minutes so obviously it will be a bit fast okay and we'll be covering almost all the important topics if it is not too much important then we are going to skip it because our agenda is to complete this in 60 minutes okay so that is a point if you want to get a course a step by step course okay then you can purchase that my course or you can have a live sessions with me that you can find the details in the description okay so let's start the very first thing whenever we talk about a testing we need to talk about quality yes yeah, so what is quality first so before talking about all these things the very first and a very important point is the testing necessary is the testing important what happens if you release an application to the market without testing it so for that i have googled up and have taken up few information which helps you to understand the importance of testing a simple slide show will explain you that okay so major bugs which has created serious problem in the past so just have a look on this slide show so major bugs which has created serious problem in the past you can see that chena 8300 bus which was collapsed in 1994 the reason behind this is there was a software problem so what type of problem it is whether it's a bug or error or defect will keep that aside but there is a problem which is related to the software so that's the reason the aircraft has been collapsed you can see that a incident happened in a national cancer institute and the reason uh, radiation therapy machine yes it's a radiation therapy machine but still it runs with the help of some computer i mean to say it is automated the patients who take the treatment should receive that exact amount of those dosage that is how it been operated right so this calculation has some problem that software has some problem due to that it has over calculated and the patients has received some abnormal dosage and in this incident eight date and 20 seriously affected again what is the problem problem related to the software you can see that windows 98 it was i guess windows 98 a lot of people know about it it's an operating system and uh, i can say an excellent operating system at, the, at that point and anyways when they were launching it, uh, it it's an tv live demonstration show they were launching windows 98 actually they are trying to connect to two one is pc and other is printer you can see two devices they are going to they are trying to connect printer to computer with usb usb connection so at that point usb was uh, not such popular okay it's it's just in the trial and error mode at that time so they were trying to connect the printer and the computer using the usb cable and suddenly a blue screen appears on the screen and the system gets shut down the reason behind that is again there is a problem with the software a billing system was fine until june 2006 of a telephonic company and they want to upgrade their billing system they have upgraded their billing system but upgraded version has problem due to that it has or with the client and the company reputation has affected by this so my intention of showing you this slide is the software bugs can create serious problem in terms of money time and lives okay so that's the reason we need to test an application as much as possible i'm saying as much as possible how much that we see it as much see testing is not a phase now testing is something process now yes so from the requirements to the end release testing is everywhere okay you may perform or some other person may perform but yes we'll be performing that throughout the cycle okay we'll see that as we go into the subject skill set required to become a tester or to get a job in the testing field 
manual testing knowledge and concepts are quite required any one of the functional testing tool is required so anyways i am not going to teach any functional tool here if you want to have a knowledge on selenium or if you want to learn selenium you can watch the description and you need to have knowledge on defect reporting tool why because whenever you get any defect in the process you need to report that okay and yes you need to have bit knowledge on sql so anyways you are not going to perform end to end database testing end to end database testing is different that is etl or data warehouse testing here just simple sql queries you need to pass it to get some information from the database okay so that database knowledge is anyways required and domain knowledge depending on your resume so these are the skill set required to become tester now the point comes so here actually we are starting from okay now the point start now the course starts technically what is testing yes what is testing it's a validating an application is called testing what is validating then why we perform testing activity it's simple anyway see the i'll get a, a lot of answers if i ask this question people say that to find the bugs to find the errors to ensure it's working fine whether it's perfect or not whatever it may be whatever the answer you give okay it, it will be pointed to only one what is that to test an application or as a tester we are going to test an application to check how far it is working according to the client requirements if it is working according to the client requirements it is working great if it is deviating there is some problem so what is testing testing is nothing but to check whether a given application is working according to the client requirements or not as long as it is working according to the client requirements no need to worry your client requirements is a base once you understand the client requirement testing is very much easy very much easy i can say that okay so testing is very much easy whenever we understand client requirements yes client requirements is your raw material i am repeating it okay so let me uh, show you this how important the client requirement is assume that uh, you are trying to develop an application a calculator application for some supermarket billing application yes a simple calculator application you are trying to develop for uh, a supermarket billing application and client has given some requirements you want a application like when someone clicks on 2 into 3 the answer should be 66 my development team has taken up the challenge and they have developed it build is very much ready on that build my tester is trying to work on that and my tester clicked on 2 into 3 i am getting an answer as 66 whether it's a quality software or not obviously it's a quality software because it is meeting the client requirement client want that it should get 66 and i'm getting it as 66 okay leave about that technically it is correct or not but as a tester's perspective it's a quality software because it is meeting the client requirement this is how the importance is this is how we check look at the application okay once you understand client requirements clearly testing is very much easier okay so we have two types of testing generally manual and automation testing in manual testing the human interface will be high and in the automation testing whatever the human interface we have done like majorly three things one performing the user operation yes in the manual testing you are going to perform the user operation you are going to directly involve in the testing you are going to interact with the application you write the username you write the password you click on sign in automation tool will do that yes you are not going to interact any options over there just you will give the details and tool will interact with that and not only that in the manual testing you are going to watch the actual behavior and you are going to give the result in the automation testing you are not going to interact with the application just you will give all the instruction what is username what is password where it should click when it should click okay then once we run it it will interact with the application it will perform all the activities it will record the uh, what you call expected and actual behavior it will compare them and it will give you the result directly that is what happens in the automation testing so we'll see deeper uh, about automation testing in the automation class but as if now manual testing in the sense the human interface will be high directly you are going to interact with the application automation testing tool will interact with the application you are not going to interact with the application okay yes now so here uh, in this course i can see that a lot of people do come from non it background to have a look on this course too okay so whenever you are coming from non it background i need to start from the scratch so just uh, i will give you an overview of types of softwares we have okay and then we'll move on to the sdlc models and all those stuff so this is the point where we want to start from what is software 
set of instructions which are documented to perform an application for a task this is a general definition you can get it for the software so software has been categorized into two types that is system software and application software system software is a software which works internally for the system like operating system bios okay and your drivers right internally for the system system hardware components right so those type of applications are called system application and the others are application softwares application softwares are the software which actually works depending on the user inputs like the video recording what i am doing facebook whatsapp this slide show all this falls under application software your banking application what not the other all the application which performs operations depending on the user inputs those are called application softwares again application software further categorized into product and project product based in the sense which is developed depending on the market standards that are called product based on a specific standards on the market standards not for a single user whereas product based those are developed depending on a specific client requirement or specific user requirement those are called project based like you can see a banking application is there icic a banking application that is purely developed depending on the icic client's requirement that is a project based product based in the sense market needs right we have gmail right market needed it and google has developed that gmail this type of applications are called product based now we are moving on to the complete life cycle software development life cycle what we call this as what is sdlc it's very important right it's like a lot of people talk about sdlc what is sdlc it's not any rocket science actually sdlc is nothing but a software development life cycle a complete development process what happens if you use sdlc see any application what we develop should undergo some process i mean undergo some technique or else i can say uh, should follow some rules this sdlc is the rules a set of rules which will keep you in a line yes whenever you follow sdlc in the sense literally saying you are following some set of rules some protocol you are going in a line right so what does this sdlc do what helps us see whenever in a simple words sdlc is a planning whenever you plan it there are high chances that we can we can complete our project right or we can achieve our goal what is our ultimate goal here developing an application within a given cost time and budget that we can achieve whenever we follow a process flow that process is nothing but sdlc but kiran what is the use of learning sdlc we need to learn only about testing right complete development phase what we do with that yes only testing is very much important here but still you need to know what's happening around you so you need to know what happens in each and every phase okay so we have this phases in the sdlc requirement collection analysis designing coding testing release and maintenance so complete these six phases will help you to develop any application okay so what is uh, so what we do is here rather than going too much theoretically into it i'll try to explain you what happens in each phase who is going to participate and what are the documents we'll get in the requirement collection this is the very first phase business analyst will sit with the client okay and he is going to produce some information or he is going to interact with the client he is going to take all the information from the client and whatever the client want he want he is going to write it in a document called business requirement specification document ba after that it will move on to the system analyst system analyst what we do is for this business needs i can say that these are the requirements in the first phase this requirements will be converted as a functionalities in the next phase functionalities and this fellow will release functional requirement specification document this brs and frs are a very important document for the tester okay so after that it will move on to the design team design architect senior developers will participate here and graphical user interface design high level and low level documentation database documents will be released and nothing much for the testers over there coding happens after done with this the actual coding happens once after the coding is done it is given to the separate testing team and the testing process happens in the testing phase okay then after it will be released and maintained okay so here main thing is you need to concentrate on this brs and frs documentation okay so what is the difference between that brs and frs 
requirement collection analysis here i am saying requirements and here we am saying functionalities what is the difference between that requirements in the sense what client want what functionality in the sense how it should be designed there is a difference a banking application is there a requirement bank to bank transfer is a requirement yes how it should work how login uh select the user to whom you want to send the money enter how much money you want to send enter password this is what a process this is what a functionality okay yes so these all things happens in sdlc so as we go in we will be i will be showing some brs and frs documents to you okay see we have done with the faces requirement collection analysis designing coding testing release and maintenance you know what happens in each phase right yes but uh, do you think that every application will be developed in the same phase yes requirement collection is a requirement analysis and analysis okay so that i guess you got that knowledge what happens in each phase but depending on the application size depending on the application complexity depending on your previous experience on the application we are going to select some models what does this models contains again this model contains that phases only but using of the phases may be different in some cases we use requirement collection once in some cases we use requirement collection multiple times in some cases we will use analysis once in some cases you we use analysis multiple times that is how it works okay so these are the models on the screen so let's have a look on that so waterfall iterative prototype spiral rad v and agile so waterfall iterative prototype spiral rad are updated outdated v is outdated but still it is very important agile is right now going in the market it's very much uh, famous now uh, i can say happening uh, around the software industry agile like agile or scrum everywhere we have a agile development process now okay Yes. So, anyways, we I'm not going to combine V and Agile. We'll see it separately. First, we'll have a look on v, uh, others models. Okay. We'll see in depth of V model, but just have a look on the other models too. See waterfall model. It is preferable for small applications. When the projects are routine and you have a good knowledge on requirements, then you can opt for this. We have requirement collection, analysis, designing, coding, testing, release and maintenance. All phases comes one after the other. okay there is no feedback mechanism between the phases we'll call this as a linear sequential order because each phase calls one after the other the main disadvantage is there is no feedback mechanism between the phases and there is no concept of dynamic changes means we can't change anything in between if you want to change it again you'll start from the scratch iterative or incremental module this is bit different we have collected the requirement from the client only once after that we have made that into pieces increments or modules and each increment will be designed coded tested released and maintained after that we'll move to the next module next module next module and so upon like that okay so it is preferable whenever the project is very huge and whenever you are not sure how the modules gonna work okay so means whenever the requirements are not much clear and if it is a big project this is used again the problem is see if you have taken a requirements now and if you are going to lease it after 2 years because it's a big application right the client mood or client mind may change right and uh, again it will not accept any changes anyways that increment mod the whole increment can be changed okay right so this is the problem with this and it's open end open end actually uh, because we can't say when exactly the completes because we are going to develop in a modules in modules okay prototype module this is a simple module where we have a extra activity that is prototyping means after taking a design we are going to give ui design to the clients client will evaluate that ui design to can feel if he feels fine then the development starts else we are going to plan it until he evaluates and he agrees for that okay next we have v model this is very important here v stands for verification and validation model lot of applications what we have developed or what you are seeing right now are being developed with the v model only very famous excellent proven model v stands for verification and validation here two things happening actually verification is happening and validation is happening what is verification it's a process checking the process validation is testing okay so in a literal words verification is actually done on documents 
validation is an application okay what we do in the verification we are going to check the correctness and completeness of the documents okay i will explain you that before to that see it's a v model coding we have taken as a center point before coding everything we all the documents will be verified and after coding application is tested means we are doing two things here we are verifying the documents as well as testing the application what is the use of verifying a document here the story comes assume that we have a frs document but unfortunately it has a mistake in it while writing this document system analyst has written some mistake he has given some wrong functionality in it i guess he has missed it or else he has misunderstood it so developer will develop it with that mistake only in even tester also tests it but he couldn't find that mistake because that is there in the frs even he think that okay that may be a functionality and client will receive a wrong project here because the wrong coding has been done due to this wrong functionality right so obviously client will receive a wrong project so what i have done is like what should we do is before giving this so called frs document to the developer and tester if i would have verified it like if i would have checked it whether everything is correct or not then i would have stopped the bug to be happened right so verification is something a prevention approach whereas validating is validating is testing means whenever there is a possibility of getting an output so verifying expected and actual that is validation okay so here in the v model we'll verify the documents and validate the application two things will happen means we are trying to stop the bug as much as possible and if any bugs occurs we are going to deal it with validation okay so what we do here we are going to verify it what documents will be verified each and every document each and every document which are built to develop an application all documents should be verified so who is going to verify it by concerned team i mean to say if someone gives me a development document and if i ask them if someone asks me to verify it i can't do it because that is not my document if i give a testing document to developer and if i ask him to verify it he can't do it because it's not his document something like that so every document should be verified in its own validation is in the sense dynamic testing that is what actual testing is actual testing is okay so in that we have unit integration functional performance and security testing is a part of dynamic testing so generally uh, testing methods we have this is very important you can take a star mark for it we have two things exhaustive and optimal testing so generally what type of testing you do we are going to do the optimal testing we are not going to do exhaustive testing exhaustive testing is impossible what is exhaustive testing first of all testing an application with all possible ways can we test it all possible ways is that possible anyways it's impossible to test any application with all possible ways if you test it with all possible ways it will takes years and years to complete it so we need to use some brain we need to optimize it we need to bit uh, tricky here so for that we need to use some optimal testing so how to use that trick what is optimal testing optimal testing in the sense testing an application with the best possible ways only best exhaustive in the sense all all is impossible so we need to optimize it we need to test with only best possible ways so if i write some test cases and if i say only these are best is that correct no right there should be some principle which should define as which is best and which is not yes and there are some principle which is coming from ages which will help us to perform this optimization testing means to derive the best possible ways so even tester should also sorry even developer should also perform the best possible ways on the source code so white box testing is a testing which is done by the developers to perform this optimization testing same like that to perform the optimization testing as a tester we are going to use black box testing techniques okay so white box testing techniques are statement coverage loop coverage path and branch coverage that is enough but black box testing techniques are very much important like boundary value analysis equivalence class partition and error guessing and it's also state that to test an application there is no need to have background knowledge of that application yes that's true if application is developed with java there is no need to learn java to test it if the application is developed with dotnet there is no need to have knowledge to test it okay yes so boundary value analysis equivalence class partition and error guessing are very much important so let's see uh, that 
So we have two types of testing, functional and non-functional testing. This falls under system testing. What is functional testing? The behavior of an application whenever you are trying to test it. That is what functional testing is. So functional testing can be done manually or using any of the tool like QDP, WinRunner, Silk, Selenium or any other tool. Right now Selenium is very much popular. So following factors are in the functional testing, object properties in the sense how the behavior of an object, a button is there, how it's behaving. Error handling, whenever we perform any invalid operations, how it's doing. Input domain, in the sense when there is a field called name box or age box or any other field, how to test that. So here we'll be using some techniques called BVA and DCP, black box testing techniques comes here actually. Okay, calculation calculation part database testing is database links in the sense if you have an application like if you have web based application and if you have links just check like how the links are working on black box testing techniques boundary value analysis and equivalence class partition are two famous black box testing techniques to derive the test data when there is some input okay when there are some input boxes client will have some expectation like 4 to 16 characters should be taken into so and so box if it is an age box it takes uh, 8 to 18 if it is a mobile number box it takes something like that so he will be having some requirements whether we need to test that requirements right so to test it like if you want to do the exhaustive it is quite impossible so we need to do the optimal testing for that we need to use some techniques okay boundary value analysis equivalence class partitioner very best so boundary value analysis says that there are possibility of errors in and around the boundary conditions if you get any errors we are going to get near the boundaries okay so anyways if it is a range as i said like it is used for the range if it is a range obviously we'll be having a minimum and maximum so minimum minimum minus one minimum plus one maximum maximum minus one maximum plus one will be tested minimum is anyways valid minimum minus one invalid minimum plus maximum maximum minus one are valid and minimum plus one is invalid okay so what is this and how it works let's have a look on this if we take bva 18 to 18 is an age box correct minimum is 18 maximum is 80 so if you do bva minimum minimum minus one minimum plus one maximum maximum minus one maximum plus one we are going to get some test data 18 19 79 80 invalid are 71 and 80 whenever you are trying to test an application you need to use this valid data 18 19 17 and 80 system should accept it okay while testing the native data you need to put 17 and 81 and you need to expect that system should reject if system is rejecting the invalid data if system is accepting the valid data it's working okay same like that if you have something called alphanumeric 4 to 16 characters okay so here only bva will not help actually right we need to take a help of some other concept also that we'll call it as an equivalence class partition so in the equivalence class partition or equivalence partition what is actually logic of it is making groups of same categorized data if you write 8 to 80 is an acceptable 18 to 80 is an acceptable age is what is given in the application so below 18 everything is a valid so we need to write everything is invalid we need to write at the invalid side we need to write everything as a invalid okay something like this here you have given see equivalence class partition inputs are divided into groups that are expected to show similar behavior something like this if it is an age box so below 18 everything is invalid 18 to 80 valid and above 80 also invalid so at this invalid point even if I test with 16, 17 or 15, it should give the same results, means the same group. Invalid, 18, 19, 20, 21, up till 80, whatever I write, it should accept it. That is also the same group. So here we are going to divide in the groups and rather than testing 17, 16, 15, from this group, if I test only one, that's enough. Even for the 4 to 16 characters, 4 to 12 characters also, 4 characters are invalid, 3 to 1 characters are invalid, sorry, 3 to 1 characters are invalid same like that 4 5 16 12 characters are valid okay so like this means we are trying to group them depending on it okay depending on its categorization okay yes now see if you want to make an example here 
So a 4 to 16 alphanumeric here we have two things one 4 to 16 that can be done using BVA you can see that we have done using BVA valid invalid 4 5 15 16 are the valid ranges as I said minimum minimum minus 1 minimum plus 1 maximum maximum minus 1 maximum plus 1 if you do like that you will get some valid and invalid ranges again ECP as I said a group thing of similar data A to Z and 0 to 9 are invalid are valid actually because also numeric a to z and 0 to 9 and all special characters are invalid so at the valid data side what I have taken let's see I have combined it valid bva and valid ecp valid bva valid ecp means valid data of 4 5 15 16 this is 4 this is 5 this is 15 and 16 so all data we need to fill it here 15 characters and 16 characters with including a to z and 0 to 9 in it you can see that all these are valid next what I have done is invalid plus valid say so three characters with a to z and 0 to 9 range is valid but characters are invalid different combinations next valid invalid see these four characters are valid actually range is 4 but the characters which are in in that because it is and and asterisk are there those are invalid right but number four characters are valid anyways it is invalid there one more combination invalid and invalid yes range is invalid and as well as this also characters also invalid like this we have taken the multiple uh, data and we'll write this test data this test data is document data actually okay because what we have done we have combined it bva and acp why because there is needed 4 to 16 characters this is done by bva alphanumeric is done by ecp okay some cases only one is not enough in that cases like this we need to combine them okay these are about the functional in the non-functional there are list of non-functional like gui usability performance security recovery compatible configuration installation and sanity and complicated testing are some of the non-functional testing so now here i need to talk about few things this doesn't fall under uh, uh, what you call uh, functional or non-functional this is a separate uh, type of testing yes we need to talk about this sanity or smoke testing is nothing but see whenever the application is changed its environment like from testers to developers or whatever it may be environment change happens right then we need to perform the smoke test or sanity test to check the stability of the build okay means before performing actual test cases some cases we'll check the stability or whether it is stable or not if it is stable then i can perform the next options if it is not stable what is the use of doing it right so that is what sanity or smoke test to check the stability of it head hoc testing is completely an informal testing testing as you like there is no test cases nothing okay it is generally performed by most experienced fellow i can say domain experts will do that normal testing is done upon that as an add-on this domain expert will try to perform the redoc type of testing l to n testing is nothing but localization from l to n there are 10 characters in between l o c o l i z a t i o n from l to n there are 10 characters so localization in the sense some companies has this tendency of localization means see if you take an uh, some flight booking website if i open that in india it should show in rupees if i open that in us it should show in dollars it's an localization it is local for you if i open that's the same flight if you open it from india it should show my indian timing right if you open it in us it should show the us timing according to your time zone it's a localization we need to check that whether this localization is working perfectly or not now the point comes retesting and regression testing is very 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 important let's see how it works and what is retesting and regression testing is assume that you have written some thousand test cases and you have executed that from 1000 test cases you got some 10 bucks okay and you have reported to the developer so what does it mean 990 pass 10 fail after reporting it to the developer developer has fixed this 10 and replied back to you saying that Kiran have fixed the 10 so what you are going to do you are execute all 999 or only 10 think and let me know you are going to execute all 999 I mean to say all 1000 again if they are functionally dependent the point is that if they are functionally dependent why because if I perform only this 10 assume that this 10 has been fixed okay 999 passed and 10 fixed 
see fixing in the sense while developing while developer uh, fixing it there are chances that you may miscode something okay you may miss something you may make some mistakes over there and some of the functionalities from this non 99 990 may not be work right if i do only this 10 and if i close it then what about this there will be impact so whenever we make changes there will be some side effects there will be some impact even you need to estimate that so for that we need to do the regression testing what is regression testing to check the application or i can say regression testing is nothing but to check the impact of modifications on the existing and working component so this 999 were existing and working so i need to check the impact of this modifications on that so what i need to do randomly if these are functionally dependent yes i need to execute this 99 plus 10 once again retesting in the sense just to test this 10 test cases only failed test cases okay so what we do is first we do the retesting only failed test cases okay now failed test cases everything is passed what we need to do now the impact check the impact okay that is how it works see first we have done the retesting in 10 8, 8 passed and 2 failed so there is no need to do regression first let's complete this first task then we do the regression regression is nothing but to check the impact of modifications on the existing and working components this is very important okay next we will move on to the test initiation so this is actually the testing phase we are at software testing uh, phases I mean, I mean to say this is a software testing life cycle we have done with the software development life cycle right this is an life cycle internally for the testing we have test initiation test planning test designing execution defect reporting and test closure these are all the activities what we are going to do generally okay test initiation starting the test it is generally done by the test manager test manager is generally initiate a document sorry initiate the test by releasing a test strategy document then after it will move on to the test plan so test planning it's nothing but a very important phase actually test planning is done by the lead see i am lead i have a people 10 members in my team and i'm going to write a test plan document for my team members what this test plan document will do it's an approach for the testing i can see this test plan contains what to test what not to test where to test when to test schedules of my testers okay only these type of information will be provided no functionalities so what type of testing we need to do what modules are included okay how many times we need to perform the testing what pass percentage we need to have what is priority rates we need to give what severities we need to provide what are the schedules for my team members okay what is the build schedule so this type of information will be provided in the test plan document okay this is a uh, system test plan you can see that uh, refer document scope in scope scope in the sense of what we are going to test these are all we are going to test out of scope in the sense what is not in the testing activity what documents we are going to deliver and when to exit from the testing these are all the conditions if these conditions are satisfied we can exit from the testing if you get any defect what is the rate you are going to provide so defect management even that is also provided means what to test way to test and when to test will be given in this documentation and this is a guideline for my tester simply saying it's a guideline for my tester okay so so that my tester follow this strictly as a guideline to perform a good process testing test design or test case design this is a very important complete uh, manual testing test case test case what is test case let me write it here test case is nothing but a document with an expected result yes test case is nothing but a document with expected result So from where you will get the expected result from the requirement documents like FRS and BRS you need to study, read them thoroughly and need to understand it okay a document with expected result is called test case. So expected result in the sense 
which we'll get from the requirement documents but when we can expect from the system whenever we perform any user operation means if if we click on login then only I can expect that whether it is moving out of the inbox or outbox or what is the behavior of a gmail whenever I click on sign in then only I can expect something right means when there is a new user operation so test case is nothing but a document with user action and expected result if there is no user action we can't expect anything right so we need to have some action the reaction is what we are trying to expect okay the reaction and what we are expecting both are same means actual and expected both are identical then it is pass a test case is nothing but a document with an user action and expected result some cases to get one expected result we need to perform multiple steps to perform login you need to open the browser you need to write the username you need to write the password you need to click on sign in right multiple user actions test case is nothing but a document with multiple user actions and expected result so user actions may be multiple in some cases but we can expect only one result for that next this is what the definition of test case where we write the test case generally test case is written in excel sheet this is most common even you can write in ALM or some other tool but 90% of the cases will write in the excel sheet only what types of test cases we have we have functional non-functional that is different but generally we are trying to test an application when you try with the two ways one is positive and other one is a negative means one with the valid data and other one with the invalid data whenever we try to test with the valid data we need to expect that system should give some valid answers if you do with invalid data system should reject it if it is rejecting it's fine with the negative data with the valid data if it's accepting it's good okay so generally we are going to in every company they have some test case template okay so almost similar my my company's test me test case template may not be similar with your test case template but almost 90 percent fields remains the same few ui changes will be there but still manageable it's not that completely change it will be almost i mean uh, almost similar document with fewer changes that's it okay this is a sample test case here here we can see all the information of that uh, test cases and let's read the field this is a test case uh, name or id so this is the first field where we provide the test case name or id and it is unique if you have 10 test cases first will be test case 1 test case 2 test case 3 so upon like that test case description in a sense your main agenda why we are performing testing what is your core agenda what your main concern okay that should be written in the test case description so that once we read the test case description you need to understand for what we have written for step name is generally step one step two step three but the thing is that the step name should consist step description and expected result what is step description user action click on home page is a step description if you click on home page system should display home page that is what i am expecting click on compose mail if you click on compose mail system should display information on compose mail that is what step description expected result so to perform some step description some cases we need to have test data the data which is used to test an application that we called as a test data okay so that this data can be derived using bva and ecp or some cases the test data will be given by the developer or by the certain teams so that test data will be written in the test data column this is this is writing the test case after few days application will be ready whatever given in the step description you need to perform that on the application and you will get some result the result will be written in the actual okay after that you need to compare step description and expected result if both are identical the test is passed else test is fail okay as simple as that clear this is how we write the test case so let me show you one more test case like how we need to write that these are the just explanation of the fields now let's see how we write the test cases so here i have taken a simple example of gmail login if that is the case test case 001 gmail login and the description to verify 
whether system navigate to inbox after successful login. I am going to perform the successful login. I know that I have a valid username and password. Okay, so just to check that whether I can successfully logged in or not. Okay, I am trying to use it. See, you have a different step. Step one, step two. Every step has some action. Step one. What does step one do? It will open the browser, enter URL, and click on go. Okay, system should display. This is what expected is. Step two. Whenever I perform username and click on next. system should display password field whenever i go to step 3 and enter password and click on next system should navigate to inbox up till here this is what my expectation is okay when the application is available see now my application is available after that whatever given in the step description i am going to perform in the application the, this is manual testing as i said as a human you need to interact with the application directly because this is a manual testing so we need to open the browser Yes, manually you need to open the browser and you need to enter the URL. Whatever the system says, that you need to paste it here. System displays login page. Okay. After that, you need to enter username and password and click on next. We have done it. Now system will display this. Whatever the system says, you just write it in the actual. Same for the all fields. After that, you need to compare expected and actually both are identical. The test is passed. if it is deviated the test is failed if it is passed there is no need to worry if it is failed the problem comes okay there are multiple ways to write the test cases see um, here we have uh, multiple test cases different test cases see sign up with the valid data sign up with the invalid data here for the two test cases like this okay some cases we have a huge test data if you have a huge test data then we are going to write a two separate documents one document will contain only test cases other document will have test data we can write the test data separately also whenever we have the huge data okay that is uh, generally how it happens there are multiple ways to write the test cases okay multiple templates are available and test cases are the most important factor in complete manual testing okay once you are able to write the test cases yes manual testing is done all the theory is different and writing the test cases is completely different once you are able to write the test cases your manual testing is done that is what we need to do so here you need to have good knowledge on the requirements so you need to have capability of picking the data from there and writing it in the putting in the test cases okay you need not to write your own data the data which is given in the frs or even in the use cases that only we need to pick it and need to write it in terms of test cases okay so we have derived some test data some cases yes test data is required and the data will be also used to test that application okay yes so this is just an overview of the test case and everything as i said earlier this is an course which actually ends in just 60 minutes the overview of testing approach will be explained here okay detailed and practical implementation can't be done in 60 minutes you know it right it's just an overview how it works okay i can say sample course uh, uh, for the big course right yes okay now so as in that you have testing an application perfect and suddenly there is some deviation means you are expecting something and system has behaved in a different way yes you are expecting that let's take an example whenever you write valid username password and click on next sign in it should take you to the inbox but unfortunately system has given a error saying that page not found so there is an deviation expected and actual are not identical now the test is fail whenever a test is failed what you are going to do is that you are going to open the application or open the code and you are going to fix it no never right so you are going to report it to the developer saying that whenever i perform so and so activity mr developer it should work like this but it is not means you need to give the complete information to the developer see uh, that can be happen multiple ways generally uh, zira is a tool where uh, defect reporting can happen alm is a tool clear quest there are many many tools available in the market where we can push our reports or push our failed test cases or reports or we can uh, report the bug 
bug generation or defect generation we can do it okay so once we do it like it will reach the developer developer will fix it again he will recall back and say that we have fixed it you need to perform retesting and regression testing again we need to send it so this is a process actually what happens so let me show you that once after the bug has been fixed sorry once after the bug has been found what is the next stage okay you are going to report it that's true that's true we are going you are not going to fix it you are just going to report it fixing is not in your hands you are going to raise the bug you are going to open it okay open in the sense there are see uh, these terms can be used a bit trickily some cases uh, open is a term which is used once after sending it to the developer developer review is also called as open even developer will also put the status called open open in the sense he is reviewing your bug even that that also we can call it as open so here in the open in the sense we are opening a bug okay raise him the bug raise also we can call it as once we raise the bug okay then normally we are going to raise it before sending it to the certain development team actually your team lead will review it a lot of people don't know that but yes your team lead will review it you need to say that yes it's a bug because that is his a team lead's duty right whatever my team members has been done whatever the work is carried out my team members obviously i need to recheck it i need to check like how it's working that's obviously my duty is so once a tester has reported a defect directly i have an option as a lead to check it or change the status or whatever it uh, it may be so first it will be reviewed by your team lead if your team lead feels that yes the bug is good then it will be forwarded to the development department not to the specific developer it will be forwarded to the development department so development department what they do is they will open or they will try to analysis your bug even we can call it as a open and also they will analyze your bug okay after analyzing your bug they can say that reject or accept or even differ also we'll talk about that later reject in the sense whenever you are not going to give a proper information for them bug reporting is a tricky process here normally you don't write a single line sentence and say that it's it's failed this will not work you need to write pin to pin why it is failed why you are thinking it has a failed according to which claw in the frs document it is failed why you are feeling that it's failed okay if you have any screenshot take the screenshot and send it if you have any other additional information give the additional information so that developer understands it properly and rather than rejecting it he will take accept see if it is if developer has rejected your bug in the sense point 1 you have not given information properly point 2 it may not be a real bug you have done some mistake okay normally we will not do any mistake but only thing is that you will not give some proper information in some cases if you give proper information obviously they will accept it okay if it is rejected again you need to reopen it or you need to raise it again or you need to change it or else if you feel that okay it's not a bug then you can close it saying that it's my mistake i am closing it fine so once it is accepted it is given to a it is assigned to some developer so what this developer will do he will fix it he will recheck the code you will try to fix it after fixing it again you will call back and will say that kiran we have fixed it on that you are going to do retesting and regression testing to check the impact of modification right retesting and regression testing is done if you feel happy with the retesting and regression testing you are going to close it if everything is fine in the retesting and regression testing you are going to close it else you are going to reopen it again okay and the same story follows so while writing a bug report you need to take lot of care okay so this is the life cycle this is how the bug flows okay but whenever you are trying to write your test cases yes you need to take lot of care same like that whenever you are writing your bug reporting you need to take lot of care so what care you need to take see as i said whenever you report it if everything is fine obviously we'll accept it if you write 
very minimal information like developer may uh, reject that saying that it's not a bug so point one give a comprehensive and excellent bug report put all your information saying that why the bug has been why you are calling it as failed test case okay uh, and according to which circumstances you are saying it where it is being written in the frs and what you are expecting actually and why system is and not why and what system is behaved okay what is the deviation have you taken any screenshot attach it like that give as much as possible to them and two things here we need to give priority and severity also for any any bug priority in the sense importance of a bug how much time you are give, literally giving it to the developer in the sense high priority assume that it will be fixed in a day or two low priority it will take in the next build medium priority maybe next week or after few weeks something like this okay just it's an example means high priority bugs are fixed in urgent basis okay low priority bugs are fixed in the later stages that is priority severity in the sense how much that bug is affecting your execution flow how much it is affecting if a, if a bug come and completely it has closed your execution we call that as a stop show stopper bug it will not let you to go forward so that bug we call it as a show stopper bug so first of all what is the severity of it high severity because it is literally stopping all my execution if i fix then only i can go ahead if not i can go ahead so severity is high right because it is stopping the execution priority is also high because it should be fixed as soon as possible okay in some cases what happens is a small spell mistake is there obviously priority is low you may do it later on and even severity is also low in some cases okay so like that severity and priority in the sense like priority in the sense giving a time to the developer when it should fix it severity in the sense the impact of it how much it is impacting it so if it is impacting very high obviously directly proportional if high severity is there lot of cases high priority will be also there because if it is impacting more in the sense it is distracting your further test cases flow obviously you need to fix this to go forward as simple as that okay this is a complete uh, overview of the manual testing it is just an overview we have not done any practical things here saying frankly i have just given you the overview of it a 60 minutes overview of manual testing okay yes so i have eight hours in depth course if you want you can just purchase it okay yes and uh, hopefully i guess you have enjoyed it thank you so much